and that's it fantastic so all being well that should now be us live for the very first joint school live my name is dr axel sylvan and i am delighted to welcome you to these live sessions which will be ongoing on a weekly and perhaps more regular basis over the coming weeks uh, i was a trainee surgeon here in london but for the past few years i've been working wholeheartedly uh, on an app and other projects to help people navigate the experience of getting ready for surgery and the post-op recovery. This is something that is uh, very close to my heart. I have worked as a surgeon, I have had surgery, and I've lived with persisting or chronic pain for 14 years. Now there's a wide team of fantastic people behind the My Recovery app and the many projects that we're working on. Uh, and we are proud to work with some of the most respected and innovative surgeons and physiotherapists and expert patients, doctors, researchers, health charities, and many more inspiring individuals across the UK and indeed all around the world. And I am especially honored today to be joined by Helen Alsop for this first uh, Joint School Live session. Uh, Helen is a physiotherapist with a wide breadth of experience, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the rehabilitation of people who've had orthopedic surgery to the lower limb. Um, and so, all being well, I'll be connecting Helen in just now. Um, as with many people all around the world, we're all finding our new ways of, new ways of working. Um, but I think Helen, we should be able to connect Helen just now. There we go. I will unpin myself. And here we are. Helen, I do believe you're with us, but you may still be on mute, I think. There we are, that looks about right. Hello, I'm Helen. <laughs> Welcome, thanks for joining us. So I'm, yeah, I'm Helen, I'm a physiotherapist working in London. Um, at the moment, I'm working at Sprint um, in Kensington, and also I work locally where I live in Northwood um, at Riverside Physiotherapy. Super, super. Okay, great. Well, and Helen, I enjoy. Uh, you know, I, I look forward to to joining in on the uh, on the exercises as we go, and I'll Absolutely. I'll very much try to try to leave that to you and and not butt in too much. Uh, right. But as we were putting this together, it did strike me that it would seem amiss not to tap into the wealth of experience that you have in looking after people who are you know, getting ready for these types of operations, and particularly knee yeah. replacement surgeries, and at various stages of recovery. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and so, I think yeah, we, we've had a few questions in which we'll get to, but just sort of at a very high level. I know there's, it, 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 it's, it's perhaps an impossible question to answer succinctly, but what would be your top tips for people who are now, you know, have been, may, may perhaps have been waiting for a hip or knee replacement operation for some time, but, you know, now, yeah. now that those procedures may be postponed or indeed they may have had the surgery, but, uh, but post-operative follow-up appointments have been rearranged or, yeah. or postponed. So. so if you're waiting for surgery, I definitely would suggest that you keep as active as you can. Uh, we know that exercise is good, even when you do have joint pain. Um, so maybe instead of doing one longer walk, you might want to split it into two walks while we're isolated, perhaps do a 10 minute walk in the morning and then later on in the evening, you might want to do another 10 minute walk. Um, so that's sort of on the exercise front. As far as doing exercises to keep your muscles working, obviously your quadriceps muscles are a very strong muscle for the knee in particular, and also muscles around your pelvis, some of which we'll be doing today in the exercise class. So there are, um, I would definitely encourage you to keep going with your quadriceps exercises and um, muscles um, around the abdominal muscles and your um, bottom muscles they will be very useful to keep you going. Um, obviously respect your pain, so you may feel fine that you have to do little and often. So pacing yourself at this time will be important, but I think it's important not just to sit around, um, it's important to get out and try and keep going, even if it's just for less time. That's before 
afterwards, um, I think it's important just to keep the basic exercises going that you were given when you left the hospital. Um, once you feel that you're beyond those, that these are very easy, then I would definitely suggest you contact your physiotherapist that you have, um, that you're engaged with, um, or otherwise come onto this forum and ask further questions and we can contact you um, individually. Um, but it is better that you, you do have face-to-face -face contact. So we are, most, most physiotherapists, here, certainly in this country, um, and I think abroad as well, they're doing face-to-face -face remote sessions. And when we're giving exercises out, that's really quite straightforward. So you will benefit from that. Yeah, yeah yes, indeed. I think that's a very important point to note, that the, the Joint School app and the other resources that we're putting together here, they, you know, crucially, they do not, you know, it's not medical advice. They do not replace any conversations that individuals will have with health professionals, be that health professionals, sorry, be that a physiotherapist, a surgeon, occupational therapist, a therapist and, and so on, right? Um, but indeed, the Joy School app can be used to track exercises, track the number of steps taken each day and sort of see then, you know, have an objective measure of how things go. And research tells us that that can be helpful to keep motivated, keep up with things, keep, keep, you know, keep up with doing things on a regular basis. Um, and indeed also to sort of, in, in fact, perhaps sometimes to pace oneself, because it's something that, uh, that we talked on, on, on earlier when we were sort of in, in the green room, that one of the key things to, to look out for is, is people might end up doing too much, or, 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 and certainly after a hip or knee replacement, doing too much too soon. Uh, but I thought also what I'd say is uh, just a, a note about what the Joint School app is. Because so after the, um, the, the workout session that Helen will, uh, will guide us through just now, uh, that would then be a great moment to you know, open up the app, check in with the app, um, and make a note of the exercises that you've just done. Um, and we will also be uh, adding uh, a video to, to our YouTube channel, uh, sort of guiding through the steps of how that can be done. But so just to do a, a, a quick note on um, uh, about the Joint School app itself. So this is a response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which has of course already caused so much disruption and pain. Um, and perhaps you uh, are waiting for uh, a hip or knee replacement surgery, or maybe uh, your post-operative appointments have been delayed or canceled. If that is the case, you are not alone. There are many thousands of people facing these extra challenges on top of what is already a very difficult time. Now, the Joy School app will bring together useful resources and form a community by connecting you with others who are facing similar challenges. It has been designed to inform, support, and empower you with a range of useful resources and tools. Now, research suggests that it takes about three months uh, to make a positive habit or indeed to break um, sort of a, a bad one, so to say. Uh, but let's see what we can achieve together over the coming weeks. Um, and on that note, uh, we'll see if we can bring back Helen uh, to kind of perhaps move us through the first, uh, the, the first of the exercise routines. And then at the end of that- You said you had a couple of, sorry, you, had, you said you had a couple of questions that people had asked. Yeah, well, should, yeah, we should, should we dive, dive into them just now before? Can, yeah, can I, I, yeah why not? And then we can do the exercises. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. And then, of course, we, maybe we'll get some exercises or some questions as the exercises are being done. And we can see if we, um, if we get a chance to, to cover any of those at the end, or indeed we'll cover them at the next session next week. Yeah. Super, yeah. So the questions that we've been sent in already, uh, so that's for, uh, this is for someone who's already on the road to recovery, so to speak. Uh, so this is from someone who is now about 10 weeks after their hip replacement. Um, and of course, you know, they've been using a version of, uh, of the My Recovery app, uh, which has a sort of fairly basic set of exercises that are quite you know, applicable to, to pretty much anyone after a hip replacement uh, procedure. And what would normally happen is that they would then see a physiotherapist at a few weeks after surgery, uh, with their app and together with a the physiotherapist, they can then update the exercises on the app. Mm -hmm. But of course, that's not really, really been possible in, in, the current, in the current circumstances. And so this person is wondering, um, you know, what, what, what kind of strengthening exercises and indeed other exercises might be appropriate to progress to. Um, 
And the other thing that they had been hoping to check in with their physiotherapist about is at 10 weeks, now they're, they're currently still using crutches. And of course, we, you know, this is another very important point. We can't give any specific personal medical advice and it's impossible to comment on, you know, on an individual online in this case. However, they are wondering, are there some general guidelines about moving from crutches away from crutches, moving from crutches to a stick as, as the case may be. Is there some yeah. general advice around that? Yeah. So regarding um, coming off crutches, you will have been given a protocol from your surgeon. Most, uh, most surgeons will, um, these days, will, you'll be fully weight bearing um, according to pain. So in theory, you can come off your crutches quite quickly. Um, in practice, that doesn't always happen. Um, but my rule of thumb is that when you feel that you're walking faster than your crutches, that's a good time to start weaning yourself off. And you'll find that you can't actually walk without your crutches for as long as you can with. So I usually say take your crutches with you. Um, and then when you get tired, you go onto your crutches, walk for a little bit longer and then go try again without them and see if it's any better. Um, but again, just remember that you've got to come back from your wherever your destination was. So it is a weaning process. Um, using a stick um, at the 10 week point, I would have thought would be would be fine. Um, but again, you know, you need to check that um, if, with your protocol that you were given um, and the advice you were given. But if you're limping still, then it's a good idea to use something. And a stick is usually um, plenty. Uh, at the 10 week stage if you've been able to keep up with your exercises yeah, as far yeah. as um, progressing your exercises are concerned um, following surgery that really is an individual thing everybody progresses at a different point um, so I would suggest you contact your physio keep up with the basics um, this exercise class will give you a few more ideas um, possibly of what to do um, to keep your general body because it's not just about your knee and hips when you're getting better the rest of your body also needs to recover from yeah. being in the in the bad habits that we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and indeed, I think with crutches as with sticks, perhaps there, there, there isn't there isn't there an idea of of sort of trying to achieve as 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 normal a sort of walking pattern as possible. And, and absolutely, yeah. So that's what I was saying about this limping. If you, yeah. you know if you aren't able to walk with a smooth walking pattern, then you're probably not ready to be without anything at all. But we usually find by about 12 weeks, most people have got a relatively good walking pattern. As I say, they've been able to keep up with their exercises and progress accordingly. But obviously in this time, it's more difficult. People are probably being more cautious. Physiotherapists, myself, are being a little bit more cautious with the advice that we give because obviously we're not having our hands on people. But I think, you know, we can see quite a lot on a face on a one-to-one -one basis if you get in touch with somebody, yeah. and obviously remotely you can get in touch with whoever you want to. So. Uh, yeah. And indeed, what what we will uh, make sure it's easy to find is links to where Helen works and how you can contact Helen for one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, afterwards. Um, Thank you. On on the on the uh, crutches and and moving off to the sticks, just as a, a another another tricky question, but. W w given given the choice of someone using crutches perhaps for a little bit longer than they need or someone perhaps coming off crutches a little bit too soon which one would you say would be better for the needle to fall on so to speak well like axel i've had surgery lower limb surgery um so i've been used to being on crutches for lengths of time and my experience would be that yes it's better to stay on longer than shorter Mm -hmm. uh, from a pain perspective and from a strengthening perspective, you will get a better gait pattern. You'll be more confident if you hold on for a little bit longer than you think. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I guess, although then it's, it's probably worth, worth flagging that indeed there's, there's with enhanced recovery and, and some of the more, more recent approaches yeah. uh, around surgery, there are several surgeons and practices where they move quite quickly away from crutches and yeah. we're not saying that that's necessarily wrong um, yeah. and, but of course that would typically be in an environment where you can be a bit more supported or you get up and running rather quickly uh, exactly. and so on so there's, there's there's many many different ways about it um, yeah so yeah i think that's just something to be aware of if you were discharged very quickly um 
after your surgery, you were perhaps walking around on the ward without your without sticks. That's very different to being outside. So what you do inside is going to be quite different to what you do outside. And indeed, yep. your gait will be different inside to being outside. So definitely encourage you to potter around the house without your crutches or stick if you feel comfortable to do so. But if you're going outside, keep with the crutches or the stick for that little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Super. Thank you, Helen. Uh, and the other question was about strengthening, strengthening exercises. And I guess that's something that will, in effect, get to with, with the workout. I think, I think so. I think, um, as I said, I think it's best to do that with one to one, to be quite honest with you, because everybody goes at a different pace. Um, and there are exercises. It's difficult to explain specific exercises yeah. Um, yeah. in a general way um, to a whole host of people whereas if you're one-to-one -one, you can be quite specific you can see what you're able to do at that point and yeah. then advise how you can progress what you're also already doing yeah. and i think that's the most important thing is to be going at your rate not at the rate that you know your friends are doing or your you know last yeah. year's person that you knew had their hip replaced yeah. or knee replaced so yeah i think the one-to-one -one sessions are the best yeah no, that sounds good, and, I, and and that's very much the the aim of what we're doing is to put together resources that are readily available, easy to access, uh, and that can can be useful at different stages of where one might be in terms of getting ready for surgery and and recovery. Uh, but that indeed, once once what once one is progressing, say you know in the in the intermediate stages, and and perhaps whether that involves being on a sort of sports specific rehab program to get back to or, or other activities to get back to, that stage is probably more appropriate to have some one-on-one -on -one advice, but that could of course also be complemented by the more general sessions that we'll be doing here on a weekly basis. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah so definitely getting back to sport is quite a long way down the line, um, but doing, um, having the advice and the support, this, these um, sessions will be invaluable, I think. Yeah. Super. Well, without further ado, uh, should we move on into the workout session? And I will. Uh, there we are. So I will pin you, and I will move off. There we are. Okay. So um, I think what would be useful to have if you if you need a chair, you probably need a mat or somewhere comfortable on the floor to lie on later on and probably have a cushion for your head. Um, those are the three things that I would suggest that you have um, to do these exercises. So we're going to start with standing up. I'm going to move back. So hopefully you can see me. Yep, you can. And we're going to start off with some breathing exercises. So if you put your hand on your chest, the top of your chest, and you're going to breathe in, three, four, five, and then slowly breathe out. And then we're going to do that again. So we're going to breathe into the top of your chest, breathing in, one, two, three, four, five, and then breathe out. Next, we're going to go to the sides of your chest, and you're going to breathe in, just gently pushing out your hands so that you can feel your lungs fill up. So you're going to breathe in again. And then breathe out slowly. Probably feeling there's more air going into that area and was higher up. So again, breathing in. And then breathing out. And then lastly, around the back, You've got your um, shoulder blades, the bottom of your shoulder blades, with the bottom of your lungs. And we're going to breathe into that. So you're going to gently um, breathe into and gently push your hands outwards into your shoulder blades. Just have a little sniff at the top, and then just get that extra bit of air in as you breathe out. Brilliant. And now to warm up your legs, you can take the chair if you're early on in your um, progression following your hip or knee surgery, or otherwise if you're fairly confident, you can just start by marching up and down on the spot. 
Now, if you've literally just had it, you very recently had, you may find you can only do it with one leg, and that's absolutely fine. So just standing on your good leg and moving the leg that you've had surgery on up and down. If you're a bit further on, then it's fine to do it on both. But just hold on just to make sure you're keeping your balance. Okay, just stop and have a rest. Just feel what your legs feel like and how your weight is between your feet. You may just want to sway from side to side. And just feel the difference between each leg. And then you can go back again, doing the marching up and down. Again, just making sure if you just have done, you're just doing it on one leg or onto if you're a little bit further on and feel confident. Remember that if you're getting any pain, that you can stop. There's no need to carry on just because I am. Just stop when you feel ready because we don't want you to overdo it. So the next exercise is some warming up exercises for your back. And these start off with just gently raising your arms up above your head. You can breathe in as you take your arms up, breathing in and out, and then coming back down. And again, breathing in and breathing out as you go up, and then come back down. Then just roll your shoulders around. And then we're going to slowly roll down, chin on chest, breathing in and out. Just let everything hang and let your shoulders relax. And then slowly bend down to touch the floor. If you need to bend your knees, that's fine. Again, if you've had just recently had surgery, you won't be able to go down quite as far as you, you had um, a bit further along the line. So just go down as far as feels comfortable. Don't try and push it. It's very, very gently. So again, you're just going to tuck your chin in, roll down as far as you feel comfortable. I won't go down as far this time just to show you that it's absolutely fine just to go down a little way. And just let your hands and arms just relax and like pendulums. And just like, swing them around. Breathe into your shoulder blades, and then you can come back up. Roll those shoulders back, and bring your arms up above your head, and come back to the middle. And then just do a little bit of watching on the spot, just to let go. And then you can do a little bit of tilt, moving your pelvis around, one way, and then the other. Again, that's quite a nice one, just freeing up the hips and the legs a little bit. And then come to a still standstill. And then we're going to come to do some strengthening exercises. So again, you may want the chair, or, or, or you can use a wall, or a table of a certain height. And what you're going to do, I'm going to just going to move the camera so that you can see my legs, my feet. There we go. And you're going to go... I'll just roll the trousers up. Okay. You're going to go up onto your toes as high as you can and slowly back down again. And again, up onto your toes and come slowly down. This time I want you to think about using your bottom muscles and your tummy muscles, so around your pelvis. So think about using those muscles to pull yourself up and then come back down. And then you're going to think about your shoulders and your head. And you're going to think about coming up nice and tall, and your head growing nice and tall up to the ceiling. And you should feel the whole of your body working nicely and come back down. Remember, you're just doing as many as you feel comfortable with. 
So on each one, just think of a different part of your body that's working. So this time I'm thinking about my heels coming up, and the calf muscles working, and coming down slowly. Then this time I'm thinking about my bottom and my pelvis and my tummy muscles, and working those to pull me up, and then slowly coming back down. And then again, I was thinking about my shoulders and my head lifting to the ceiling and then coming back down. And then you're going to sit on your chair now. I'll move the camera again. There we go. It might be nice to see my head as well. There we go. Great. So now we're going to do some sit to stand. Now, this is quite an advanced exercise if you've just had your surgery. So, I want, so it may be better for those who just recently had surgery just to do some straight, straightening your legs and then bending. Straightening your neck, knee and then bending. Sorry, my camera keeps disappearing. Right, and then the other side as well, just straighten. So that's the alternative, all right? And I would do that perhaps five times slowly. All these exercises are better done slowly so that you get the best control, okay? So when you're sitting to stand, you may want to use your hands to push up from, but otherwise try to do it without. So this is with your hands. You're just gonna come forward, stand up, and then come back down again. And use your hands just to lower yourself gently into the chair. And then try to see how little weight you can put on your hands. The second one is pushing up. And coming up straight, tighten all those bottom muscles together. Think about your knee muscles. And then slowly back down. And use the chair if you need to. Okay? So we're going to do three more of those. Again, if you feel you've had enough, you can either just rest and sit and wait for the next exercise, or perhaps just try doing the earlier exercise I showed the people who were doing things at the early stages of their knee. Let's just sit again. Up you come. And then down again. And up. And down. And then just one more. And down. And the maximum you want to do of that particular exercise, I would say, would be 10, between 5 and 10 repetitions if you're at that level. But as I say, anything, you want everything to feel smooth and comfortable. If you start having pain, you just stop. All right? So those are the exercises to strengthen. And now while we're still sitting, we're going to do another exercise for rotating your, um, your arms. So you're going to take a breath in, and as you breathe out, you're going to turn to the right. Let's turn from the waist, breathing in and out until you get to the end of range, and then come back to the middle. Turn to the other side, breathing in. As you breathe out, turn around, breathing in and out a couple of times at the end of range, and then coming back. And again, if you repeat this to one side, and then you can come back, and again to the other side. Remember always to be moving at your waist so that your knees and hips don't all go together. All right, so it's a very specific to the top part of your spine. The next exercise or stretch that we're going to do before we come on to one more exercise before we do relaxation is to do um, some side flexion. I'm just gonna move the camera again so you can see me. Yep. And we're going to start off by just bending to the side, just running your hand down towards your knee. Come slowly back up again, and then go to the other side. Remember to keep your pelvis facing forwards and then slowly come back up again. Breathing in, and as you breathe out, 
Then down to the other side again. Hold it there, breathing in and out. And then coming back up. And again to the other side, on the breath out. This time bring your arms up in the air, leave one behind, the other one down by your side, and you're going to stretch right over your pelvis. Try not to move sideways like that. What you want to do is to come up and over. You actually get, and sometimes you can get a bit more of a stretch that way, but at the moment we just want to stick to coming up and over. Come back down, other arm up, and back the other way. You can breathe in and out, or give a little bit of extra stretch, and then you're going to come back up. Roll those shoulders around, and then lastly, we're just going to go over to the wall, and I'm going to show you a, a, um, a gentle press up that you can do. So, I'm going to just do a press up for your arms. Remember to push your heels down into the floor and squeeze, and that will help to squeeze your bottom and put your tummy in. And it should be like you're doing a plank against the wall. Pushing your arms in and out. I hope you can see my elbows straightening and bending. That's all it is. Just letting go, but remembering to keep those tummy muscles working. If you can do five or six of those, that would be really good. Okay, that's the end of the exercise part. Um, then there's now going to be a bit of relaxation. So if you want to find a comfortable place on the floor um, with your mat and your cushion, or if you just want to stay sitting, that's absolutely fine as well. So find a comfortable chair to sit on and we'll do some relaxation. So as you're lying on the floor, just want you to put, just think about your breathing. You're just going to breathe in and out. I want you to notice what your breathing sound feels like. Is it fast or slow? Just see what that feels like. So just breathing in and out. And as you're um, lying there and breathing, just try and slow the breath down. So we're going to breathe in for five, four, three, two, one. And then you're going to breathe out for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And again, just breathing in slowly. Five, four, three, two, one, and slowly out for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So just as you're lying there and breathing, just want you to feel what that feels like. And I want you to do a body scan. So just run yourself down your body, see if there's any place of tension, any pain that you're feeling. And just acknowledge that the pain is there and just think about it for a minute and then we're going to go to the bottom of your um, feet and you're going to point your toes as hard as you can away from you and then point your toes up to the ceiling as far as you can pull them up and then you're going to just let that relax, just let those feet just be so that they're comfortable and then you're going to come to your knees and you're going to tighten the thigh muscles as hard as you can. So you're going to push the knees into the ground. If you're sitting, just push your feet, ankles, your feet into the floor as hard as you can and then relax. So again, tighten those thigh muscles as hard as you can, and then relax. And then we're going to move up to the pelvis area. 
and you're going to tighten your bottom muscles. And you're going to squeeze the bottom muscles as tightly as you can. And then relax. How does that feel? So now as you've done the whole of your legs, just let them go all floppy. You should be resting comfortably on the ground. So just let that legs just roll in and out a little bit, just to feel them being relaxed. Then you're going to come to your shoulders and your just feel what your shoulders are like. Just pull them up towards your ears and then just relax. Push your shoulders away from your ears and then let them be. Just give them a little bit of a wiggle. And then you're going to just again feel what that feels like to have your arms resting and your back resting on the bed. Just perhaps pull your shoulder blades back towards the floor and then let your shoulders relax. And lastly, we come to the head. I just want you to roll your head from side to side on the pillow. And perhaps just push the very bottom of the head into the pillow so that you can feel that bit of tension at the back of your head. And then again, just rest back. And then revert back to your breath, breathing in and out slowly for five and out for seven. You probably find naturally now that you're breathing a bit slower. And that just again do that body scan, see if any of those aches and pains, the tension is gone, or is it still there? And as you're lying there, I want you to take a walk. Um, somewhere where you know well, perhaps along a river, along a coast path, um, up in the mountains, um, and you're going to take in what you're seeing, and you're seeing and hearing. So are you hearing the water, or the sea, or waves, listening to the birds in the trees? Are you hearing the wind? Are you feeling the sun shining down on your face and your arms? Just as you're lying there, picture yourself walking no longer one of your favourite places. Or maybe just sitting or watching a favourite area. So find something that makes you feel comfortable, something that you can enjoy looking at, or an activity you enjoy doing, which is relaxing and calming. And if you start to wander, away from that, go back to your breathing, just breathing in and out. And then for that last minute or so, just try and concentrate on that scene that you're imagining or thinking about. Or you go on holiday, you go the weekend. Just take time to breathe and be grateful for the sunshine and the warmth that we have in the summer months. And there you go, that's the end of the session. So doing exercise and relaxation is a good combination, particularly when we are coping at a time like this, when we've got pain. If we, are, we know that breathing and slowing down our breathing is a very helpful way to help us control our pain, as well as doing the exercises. Thank you, Axel. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I don't know about. I was, I was, I was, I was getting so relaxed. Like, you were I, off. <laughs> yeah, I, I got all that. I, I had to put a jumper on. You know, when you sort of lying there, getting all relaxed. I had to, uh, re remember, I need to hop, hop back into this. And um, 
Uh, yeah, you're in charge. <laughs> and, and sign off the first session. But thank you very much for that, Helen. That, that was wonderful. Now, in, and in terms of, I guess you, this was a quite a gentle start, so to speak. But are there any particular modifications? You mentioned a couple, but perhaps yeah. uh, for those who may have, um, you know, have, have had surgery on both sides or have had surgery on one side, but the other side is also reasonably severe and, and a few things. Yeah. Are there some other modifications to, to what we've gone through? Yeah, I think, I think the modifications are to just do a few. Um, and perhaps to come back later to, to finish off the, to perhaps split the exercise class into two mm -hmm. so that you, um, you can do a few of the exercises. That's why it's broken up into sort of lower limb, upper limb and back to lower limb again. So you don't have to necessarily do them in the order that I did them. You might find that you just want to do the heel raises and then go across and do the arm exercises. Um, so just split it up a little bit to break it up. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would modify it mostly. Okay, and and as a sort of again, it's difficult to cast a cast a general uh, a, a general net, so to speak. But how how often would you say uh, one should do these kind of this this kind of workout, this kind of twenty twenty minutes? Um, I I mean I I do an exercise routine in the morning when I wake up when I have my shower and I'm warm. It's a good idea. It's quite good to do it when you're warm and sort of before you start the day because otherwise we tend to forget it. Um, and I think while we're sitting quite a lot, it's a good idea perhaps to do it again after lunch um, or um, just give yourself a bit of a stretch from time to time. So the exercise is where you um, stand up and you put your arms in the air, it gives you a nice stretch. And that's when you do a roll down, it's quite nice because you just get a bit of a relaxation. Yeah, so yeah. there's a variety of different things that you can do. So you don't necessarily have to do the whole workout, yeah. but you could perhaps choose a couple of exercises sizes that you find particularly helpful for the bit that you're in but as far as doing your exercises for your knee, knees and hips you should really be doing something um three times a few exercises three times a day yeah yeah and, and, that's and particularly at the moment when we're so when we're stuck with being outside for such a short time yeah yeah, yeah. I, I remember one of the uh, one of the orthopedic professors i, I worked with uh, a few years ago he used to say that in terms of exercise you know, onwards after having had a knee or hip replacement, in in some respects, the best exercise is the one that you can carry on doing. And and in some ways, yeah. the, the less is yeah, more, I guess it, that, that there's something about finding that habit, taking those positive steps. Yeah. And as we said before the the workout, it can take twelve weeks, three three months to establish those. So that's yeah. one of the reasons you know we'll, we'll be here doing these um, regular sessions, and it's also. Yeah. Uh, a good time now after a workout like this to log them in on the Joint School app. Um, you know, and, and, and as you go, then you'll see some graphs of, of your exercises and uh, some people will find that you know, a useful way of, of, of maintaining that habit, taking those positive steps and finding that motivation. So the research suggests that, you, that people, if you give somebody three exercises, uh, they, will, they will do one. <laughs> okay. um, definitely. So... We, we use it. So now I tend to give people three exercises if I'm at one time, and then each time we log, we log back in to see each other again, I would put, make it, maybe give them another three exercises, mm -hmm. and then it gives them a bit more of a choice. But I think you can be overloaded. So I think be beware of that and perhaps just concentrate on a two or three exercises that you feel that you can do well and yep. that you feel are helping you. Yeah, almost in, in, a, in a sense, it's about doing as little as you possibly can do on a regular basis yes to the, you do as little as possible for the best effect <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> and, and of course i think we've we've flagged it a few times but uh, you know the, the, there are the, there are quite a lot of individual circumstances and things that of course this cannot cannot cover uh, yeah. and so if anyone out there um, has any concerns or feels that something isn't quite right for them, then it's probably best not to do it and to check in with yeah. your GP, your surgeon, or a physiotherapist. And as uh, Helen, as you've said, um, physio many physiotherapists will be available for one-on-one -on -one, uh, advice and sessions, including yourself. Um, and we mentioned it before, but there will be links to Sprint and Riverside Physio where you can uh, get in touch with Helen for those one-on-one -on -one sessions. Yeah. Uh, and of course, also, if there's anyone out there watching this right now who doesn't yet have the Joint School app, uh, on that app you will find 
exercises matching what we go through here, you will find tools to track your exercises. And indeed, on the exercise planner, which you'll find in the more tab of the, uh, of the app at the bottom right, um, you'll be able to film and add your very own exercise videos to match a plan that's been put together for you um, by your physiotherapist or, or your team. Um, and we'll also be posting a, a video, a sort of step-by-step -step guide to how to use the exercise planner in the app on our uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. I think the important thing is to remember not, that these exercises aren't to make you more painful, but to help you to get strong. And you're only going to get strong if you do it within a, what's comfortable for you at this stage. So we're not asking you to push through pain. We're just asking you to do something that's going to make you feel a bit better, make you feel a bit stronger. Yeah. And, and I guess I, I realized, as we were saying, the, the, the less is more thing that actually, you know, the, 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 the national recommendation, I believe, is for adults to uh, achieve 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise every week. And I don't know why they phrase it as 150 minutes as opposed to two and a half hours. But generally, when you look it up on the NHS choices and other guidelines, it's 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise. But of course, if you've recently had surgery, that's, that's not the expectation, but the expectation is that, you know, hopefully we can help you get there, but certainly your team will help you get back to that point of reaching a good amount of, uh, of activity, being able to do the activities that you want to do, living the life that you want to live, essentially. Super. Okay. Well, so uh, next week we'll be uh, learning a bit more about osteoarthritis. We'll be going over a few more workouts. Uh, we'll, we'll make them a bit more specific. So we'll separate them out to hip uh, and knee. Uh, and we will also cover some tips on managing pain at home. So until then, everyone, uh, stay well, stay safe, and uh, keep up the good work. And thank you, Helen. Thank you. Super. Okay. Well, I think that's it. I think yeah, wonderful first session, Helen. I'll uh, well I'll end the meeting and we can catch up afterwards and, and map out uh, next yeah, week. Yeah, was that okay? Do you, was that the sort of thing you wanted? Yeah, we're still live, so but so that's perfect. <laughs> no, you're grand, you're grand. But I'll end the meeting just now and we'll catch up after. Right. Thanks, Helen. Bye bye now.